reality will keep you from becoming a household name. And if you're a nominee whose judicial philosophy Senate Democrats deem to be objectionable, no centuries-old standard of presumed innocence will protect your name, your family, or your reputation from irreparable damage. Now, fortunately, Chairman Grassley has taken action to clean up this mess. Last Thursday, he supervised a professional and respectful hearing. He retained an experienced sex crimes prosecutor to methodically collect the details of Dr. Ford's recollections. This is a professional who was recognized as Outstanding Arizona Sexual Assault Pr Prosecutor of the Year by former Democratic Governor Janet Napolitano, a former Cabinet Secretary of President Obama, and herself a member of the Anita Hill legal team back in 1991. Here's what she wrote in her memo to members following the hearing. A he said, she said case is incredibly difficult to prove. But this case is even weaker than that. Dr. Ford identified other witnesses to the event, and those witnesses either refuted her allegation or failed to corroborate them. I do not think that a reasonable prosecutor would bring this case based on the evidence before the committee, nor do I think this evidence is sufficient to satisfy the preponderance of evidence standard, that is a lower standard. So will our Democratic colleagues listen to this expert opinion, although it conflicts with their political mission? Don't hold your breath. Nor am I optimistic they will stay consistent and accept the conclusions of the supplemental background investigation the FBI is now conducting on top of its six prior investigations of Judge Kavanaugh. Democrats demanded a supplemental investigation. They proclaimed it would be a game changer. The Democratic leader and the ranking Democrat on the committee both said recently that an FBI investigation can be completed in less than a week. But Mr. President, I'd bet almost anything that after it runs its course in the next few days, we will then be treated to a lecture, a lecture, that anything short of a totally unbounded fishing expedition of indefinite duration is too limited or too arbitrary or somehow insufficient. We all know that's coming. If you listen carefully, Mr. President, you can practically hear the sounds of the Democrats moving the goalposts. Remember, back in the summer, Democrats said there weren't enough documents to get a good sense of Judge Kavanaugh's career. Then we heard there were too many documents. Then once Dr. Ford's private allegation was mysteriously made public, we couldn't possibly move forward until we heard from them both. Then, after neither the hearing nor the statements of supposed witnesses yielded any corroborating evidence and, in fact, produced evidence that supported Judge Kavanaugh, we were told only an FBI investigation would resolve this and that it could be done promptly. So let me go out on a limb, Mr. President. Let me make a small prediction. Soon enough, the goalposts will be on the move once again. And I would respectfully say to my colleagues, do these actions suggest this has ever been about finding the truth? Anybody believe that? Do these actions suggest that this has ever been about giving Judge Kavanaugh a fair hearing? 
This institution has seen before episodes somewhat like what we're now seeing from some of our colleagues across the aisle. Back during the McCarthy era. In fact, in 1950, character assassination and uncorroborated allegations were being utilized in a very different debate in that era. That's when a distinguished senator from Maine named Margaret Chase Smith, an icon from the great state of, of our colleagues, Senator Collins, went to the Senate floor to say enough was enough. She gave a speech that guaranteed she'd be in the history of the Senate. She titled it Declaration of Conscience. Here's what she said. I do not like the way in which the Senate has been made a rendezvous for vilification, for selfish political gain at the sacrifice of individual reputations and national unity. Margaret Chase Smith went on, whether it be a criminal prosecution in court or a character prosecution in the Senate, there is little practical distinction when the life of a person has been ruined. We should listen to these words. They speak as loudly today as they did 68 years ago. In my judgment, the pattern of behavior we've seen confirms what Democrats own public statements have told us. They're committed to delaying, obstructing, and resisting this nomination with everything they've got. They just want to delay this matter past the election. That's not my supposition, Mr. President. That's their plan. According to another Democratic member of the Judiciary Committee, the junior senator from Hawaii, that's their plan. So soon, I expect we'll hear that the conclusions of the expert prosecutor who questioned both witnesses at last week's hearing aren't reliable, or that the FBI's investigation was not infinite or endless enough for their liking. Maybe we'll hear the real issue is not these uncorroborated allegations of misconduct after all, but rather the fact that Judge Kavanaugh, now listen to this, drank beer in high school and in college. Or the fact that he was rightfully angry. Who wouldn't be? That his good name and his family have been dragged through the mud with a campaign of character assassination based on allegations that lack any corroboration. Who wouldn't be angry about that, Mr. President? Their goalposts keep shifting, but their goal hadn't moved an inch, not an inch. The goal's been the same all along. And so let me make it very clear. The time for endless delay and obstruction has come to a close. Judge Kavanaugh's nomination is out of committee. We're considering it here on the floor. And Mr. President, we'll be voting this week. Majority Leader, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. 